Hey, this is CJ Watson, former NBA player, and you're watching Sachin Ochakta Show. Hello, everyone, and welcome back to the Ochak Day Show. We're Silicon Valley's first business and self-improvement podcast for teens, hosted by a teen, me. My name is Sachin Sayal. I'm a 17-year-old award-winning entrepreneur and podcaster from the Bay Area, and I interview remarkable and influential entrepreneurs, executives, investors, and inspiring individuals from all walks of life so we can learn from their stories and level up ourselves. I'm also the co-founder and CEO of 3doshas.com. We're a coaching company transforming lives through coaching principles inspired by Three Dosha's energies from yoga and Ayurveda. And the purpose of this show is to inspire you to go for it, which is what the Punjabi word Ochakte means. Today, our very special guest is CJ Watson, who's a former player that played for 10 years. He's also a philanthropist, entrepreneur, and children's author. CJ Watson played professional basketball for the Golden State Warriors, and I'm in the Bay Area, so I love the Warriors. Chicago Bulls, Brooklyn Nets, Indiana Pacers, and also the Orlando Magic. He's also written four children's books and he's published a coloring book. He's also an investor and team owner of the Texas Ranchers Major League Pickleball team. So, welcome to the Ochak Deso show, CJ. How are you and what's new and exciting? Oh, uh, thanks for having me. I appreciate it. Uh, nothing uh, is pretty new on my end. Like I said, just took my daughter to school today. So, uh, I'm going to clean up the house the rest of the day, you know, and uh, just relax a little bit. <laughs> nice. Well, you know, I woke up today so excited. And because I was interviewing like an athlete, I intentionally did wait to take a cold shower and you know, drink some tea. <laughs> I'm all fired up, ready to go. Actually, when I got the email that you were interested, my brother and I played 2K and then we, we played you. And I'm like, this guy in the video <laughs> game that I'm playing with, I'm about to meet him. So thank you for the opportunity. I appreciate it. Um, let's just start off with the first question. Can you bring us back to your teen years? Um, what were you passionate about as a kid? Um, I was passionate about just having fun, uh, getting good grades, trying to make my parents, you know, uh, proud and happy, um, just staying out of trouble. I think when, as a teen, I didn't really honestly uh, know much about the NBA. I just played basketball just to stay out of trouble and because I was kind of good and it was just something to, to do with my friends. And uh, my parents always talk, talk to me about going to college. So I knew I had to help them, you know, uh, pay for college. And I thought I can do that by getting an athletic scholarship. That's amazing. And you just said something right now. You said you played basketball to say to stay out of trouble. What exactly does that mean? Uh, just growing up in the inner city here in Las Vegas, uh, there's a lot of things that can get you in trouble, gangs, uh, violence, and a lot of things happened in the area that I grew up in. So it was kind of it's kind of hard to, to stay away from those things. But my parents shielded me uh, pretty well from those things, and a lot of a lot of family, church members, and stuff like that. So my parents always kept me doing something. Like I said, playing basketball or being in church or. Uh, I was going to work with my dad. He had a janitorial service, so I was cleaning up all the time. So they kept me, uh, my mind focused and just uh, stayed away from that kind of stuff. That's amazing. Um, tell us about your basketball journey. I'm sure everybody's looking at that like frame behind you. Uh, <laughs> how were you able to make it to the NBA? And like, what does it take to get there in your opinion? It was a tough road. It wasn't easy. Uh, definitely, you know, like I said, I didn't really think about the NBA until college. I played on the USA team with players like Darren Williams, Dee Brown, now those guys were talking about uh, leaving school early to enter the draft. And that's when kind of when I really started to think, hey, I'm good enough to be on the USA team. I, I think I, I'm good enough to play in the NBA. So that's kind of how the, the thought process started. And then my senior year in college, I didn't get drafted. So I had, I had definitely, I went overseas uh, for a year in Italy and Greece and I uh, played there and then came back. So, and then played in the D League, but now it's called the G League. So. Um, definitely, you know, went through a lot of ups and downs, a lot of trials and tribulations. Uh, a couple of times I wanted to quit basketball because I wasn't getting the, the notoriety that I thought I thought I should. So I definitely, you know, believe to never give up, uh, definitely stick things out because you never know how things can end up. So, but definitely, you know, it's uh, definitely a blessing to play for 10 years and just to be able to travel and, and meet a whole bunch of different people. I love it, man. And I'm curious, you, what made you not quit basketball? What made you say, no, I'm not going to make the decision. I'm going to keep stay like locked in and then you made it to NBA eventually what made you not quit my parents man my parents uh they knew how much work I put into it uh they they never quit anything in life and they weren't gonna let their kids quit so that's just how they they raised us um and it's just them being a good supporting system and uh their belief in God and my belief in God also and 
like I said, um, them having a, a all my aunts and uncles knowing all the the things that I went through and the goals that I wanted to accomplish. Um, and they just, like I said, just never let me quit. And just, I'm just very thankful for. Them. That's amazing. Having, um, I, I'm a big believer in this. I love both my parents. They were so supportive of like my entrepreneurial projects and my podcast and everything. And I think when you have parents that are like really supportive, you also get motivated, right? So it's, it's yeah. always nice to have great parents. And you're actually a dad yourself too. Yeah, yeah, um, for sure. How about we talk a little bit about that? How's your experience with that? Uh, it's, it's a great experience. I think being a parent, no one really has like the handbook on parenting. <laughs> it's a, uh, you yeah. can learn by, you learn each, each and every day. And I'm still learning. I have a 16, to 8, and 4, and they they uh, make my life great. Uh, they make it uh, fun at times and also stressful at times, but it's definitely a joy to have kids and you know be able to be a parent and uh, be able to raise them and, and teach them uh, good values and good morals so they can go out and you know hopefully be successful in their life. I agree. And um, any of your kids playing any sports? Uh, my oldest daughter plays volleyball. She's like one of the top volleyball players in her class. She just oh, committed nice. to the University of Pittsburgh, so definitely proud of her and happy oh, for her. Oh, congrats to her. Nice. Yeah, just just trying to keep her uh, focused, uh, you know, in school and volleyball. And uh, the other two are just, they're just kids right now. They just uh, yeah. play Roblox. Uh, they play basketball, pickleball too. So uh, definitely uh, just trying to get them in uh, some kind of sport, but also just as long as they keep their grades straight, I really don't care what they do. Yeah. Okay, so I want to ask you a question. Well, I wanted you to look back at your NBA career. I want to ask, like, is there... Like, what moment stands out to you the most in your NBA career and why? I think the most would be just getting that first call up from the D-League. Uh, I remember I was in Rio Grande Valley in Texas playing for the D-League team and got the call say I was going to get called up. Um, just uh, putting all my efforts and, and hard work into that to that moment. Um, and then actually putting on the NBA jersey uh, when I played my first NBA game with the Golden State Warriors against the Trailblazers and then you know, actually checking into the game. Uh, those are like memories that you will never forget. That's awesome. Yeah. And I, I said, I'm from the Bay Area, right? So I love the Warriors. I've been to a few games in this closet right here. There's a bunch of Warriors merch and stuff. But actually, yeah, yeah. Um, you played in the Warriors back when the logo was different. The one that yeah. I had is a different <laughs> one. So you're like an OG, man. That's awesome. Uh, can you share a memorable piece of advice that you received from like a coach or teammate that I stayed with you? Uh, one of my coaches, Coach Keith Smart, uh, he was a great basketball player himself, a great coach also. Uh, but he was just always just telling me just always to be focused on not selflessly myself, but just be focused on my talents and the work that I put in and not worrying about the next person or the next man next to me or how much money he's making, or how much money the next person is making. Just just be focused on yourself and uh, you'll get, you know, you're just due. And uh, as long as you're continuing to keep getting better and a good person, a good teammate, uh, you know, everything will work out in the end. Yep, that's how it works. And I was also going to, so one thing I think that's really cool about you is that you're a children's author. I, I found that mm -hmm. so cool. I checked out your website. Guys, you can actually open the tab. Go to, I think it's cjpens, P-E-N-S dot com. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Yep. Check it out. What inspired you to become a children's author? I know it was crazy. I was just sitting on the couch one day. I said, how can I continue to tell my story, but also be an inspiration for kids? Because I had just retired and, uh, you know, obviously playing the NBA, a lot of kids look up to you just because yeah. you play basketball in the NBA. But I wanted to do something more kind of like inspirational. Um, so I just wanted to like tell my story, you know, all my books are a true stories. So uh, I wanted to be able to relate to kids and show them that, you know, hey, you can't have big dreams. You can make it. Uh, it doesn't matter where you come from. Like I said, I came from the inner city and I had a lot of negative things that probably could have swayed me in different ways. But I stayed focused and, and kept believing in my dreams and look where look where I turned out. So you can do the same thing. Yeah, I'm curious, what are some of like the titles of your books? Yeah, the first one is called CJ's Big Dreams. It's about uh, CJ. Like I said, playing basketball, having his dream of playing in the NBA and then working hard and actually achieving that dream. The next one is called CJ's Big Project, which is about homework. My parents were real strict on homework. Like I said, I got good grades. So if I didn't get good grades, you couldn't play basketball. You couldn't even go outside to play with your friends. So that's what that book is about. The next one is CJ's Big Moment. Uh, I got bullied as a kid, which I'm sure a lot of people got bullied as a kid, but we didn't know how to handle it. But this book to, teaches you how to handle it in a positive manner. And the last book is called CJ and his Magic Socks. And I got to travel to Italy when I was 16 with my mom to play basketball. I got to see a, a different culture. I got to see a different world. And a lot of kids in my own neighborhood probably never leave Ve Las Vegas or that little area. So just want to teach kids to get out, see things, see different cultures, see different things. And there's so much stuff out there you can that you can see and, and dream. It's that's not in your little, little section or community. That's so amazing, man. I honestly think like 
it's one of the best ways to get to like the young audience, right? Because yeah, it's just awesome. Like when I search you, I'm like, oh yeah, okay, NBA player. Like now I turn entrepreneur, investor. I'm like oh, children's author. That's so that's yeah. so like unique. It's very unique, and I, I love your website too. So you guys can check that as well. It's also in the the description in the bottom. Um, so like I just said right now, you're an NBA player turned entrepreneur and investor. How was that transition, and what made you excited about entrepreneurship? I just wanted to do something different. Uh, growing up, uh, basketball was my whole life. Like I did basketball for 20 some years, but I never really learned the business side of it, I guess. But also I wanted to be an entrepreneur, entrepreneur and learn the business side and, and see what, what that life is like. Because I, I definitely, I think it's definitely interesting. And I think I tell kids all the time, you don't have to just be an athlete because the uh, athlete is only a short span of your life. If you can be in the business side of things, business side of sports, mm -hmm. that can last you, you know, your whole lifetime. So and I think that's a more longevity of a, of a career. Uh, so I always teach and preach that to little kids. Nice, nice. And then can you explain to my audience, what does it mean to be a minority owner and investor of the Texas Ranchers Major League Pickleball? And then I'm curious, um, what drew you to pickleball as a sport in particular? It just means I'm just a, a small percentage of the owner ownership group. Uh, there's so many of us. This is a lot of athletes. I couldn't even name them all if I wanted to. <laughs> uh, but it's a lot of athletes, a lot of VC groups. Um, um, but yeah, definitely pickleball was a growing sport. It still is a growing sport. I think the... The, the reach that it can get and the, the probability of it uh, continuing to grow is has such leaps and bounds. So I definitely played it one time. I was like, I, I like this sport. It's not too much uh, tackling on my body. And, um, you know, I'm older now, so I don't want to do all that running and stuff. So I definitely think it's a, it's a fun sport. And it's a it's a community also. You, you see people who, yeah. who, who you don't come from different walks of life and they, they play pickleball one time, introduce themselves to another, and now they're friends for life. So uh, the sports brings people together and I love to see it. Nice. That's amazing. Okay. I want to ask you this. This is, I'm looking forward to seeing what you're going to say. What is, what's next for CJ Watson? What are some of your future plans and goals going forward? Um, what's next for me? I just say just being a better father each and every day. Uh, like I said, teaching my kids to grow up and have good morals and values. Um, just trying to continue to invest in good companies, uh, companies that I think can help change the world and have an impact on people's lives. And um, I think hopefully one day I want to turn my books into like a cartoon series. There's not many black uh, cartoon cartoon series out there. So that's kind of one of my major goals is to turn my books into a cartoon series or, or, or a movie. So I think I think it'd be cool if I can you know, achieve that goal. Well, you know what? Five years from now, if it wanted to hit cartoon series by C.J. Watson, I said it first on my show. <laughs> right, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Speaking amazing. into existence. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay, I was actually gonna, as you wrap here, I was gonna ask you the last two questions that I asked on my guests, but I wanna, I just thought of one right now that I wanna ask you. Yeah. You know, whenever someone say, I've heard this so many, oh, you guys, you know, NBA players, they work out hours and they practice and they, can you give us an accurate, like, explanation of what is the day in the life of NBA player? Like, when you were at your peak in your career, when the yeah. NBA was the only thing you were doing, what was your, like, like, people say, oh, you have to get up early and then do this and do this. Like, I just want to hear from you. What was your, like, uh, daily routine and schedule? Yeah, so I would say, like, a, like during the season or, like, uh, off season? During the season, like, when everything's, like, and the press is on you and you like, a season, lot of stuff okay. happening, all that, yeah. Uh, so during the season, okay, I would say, uh, like, a typical Monday would be, practice would be at uh, 9 a.m. Or no, man, practice might be, like, at 11, actually. So we'll wake up, like, around, you know, 7 or 8 and get there, um, around nine, eat breakfast, uh, workout, weights, uh, weights, get treatment, and then have practice from like 11 to 1.30 or two. Uh, after practice, maybe get some extra shots in, ice, shower, rehab. Um, after that, um, your day is pretty much free, honestly. You can do whatever you want. Like if you have kids, you pick them up from school, mm -hmm. uh, stuff like that. You have family, you just spend family time with them. But other than that, your day really consists of like an eight to two or whatever. And then after that, like if you have a game the next day, you'll prepare for the game, watch film, stuff like that. So like I said, the day is, uh, people think it's not a lot, but it is a lot when you actually go into the grind of it and know the ins and outs of the season, especially when you're during the season. Yeah. And I was just curious and I searched it up, but for fun, but the acceptance rate of the NBA is it's like 0.03%. So <laughs> you really have to be really good to make yeah. it. Um, and that's why, I mean, it means a lot that you came on my show. I was super excited um, when I when I got the news. Um, but as we wrap up here, last two questions that I asked all my guests. First one is, what's your best, like, what's your all-time best advice for teams? My best advice is uh, never give up. Uh, always keep solid, good people around you who are wanting and willing to give you the honest truth, uh, even when you don't want to hear it. Um, but yeah, just never give up and always believe in yourself and keep the faith. Awesome. I love that. 
And then last question of the day is, what was your favorite part of being a guest on the Ochakta show today? Uh, favorite part of being a guest was you are a for, former Warrior fan, or you're probably still a Warrior fan. But, no, no, you know, I'm not former, man. I'm still, I'm still uh, yeah. Yeah, you're still, you're still a Warrior fan, so that's a, uh, you don't see a lot of Warrior fans, like, especially old, old OG Warrior fans, the ones before Steph Curry uh, made them popular. <laughs> yeah. Well, I w I'm 17, so like, when you were in the Warriors, I was really, I was like a little kid. I was pretty young. Yeah, yeah, so. yeah. You were probably like maybe nine, maybe eight. <laughs> I, I got into basketball like uh, like around 10-ish or 11-ish, I think. And then my cousins were also into it. And then we got okay. into 2K. And then 2K yeah, yeah. got me more into it. By the way, right. you're my top player on my team, but I played with like the Pacers, an old team yeah. the Pacers, and you were on there. Yeah. And I only I was only shooting with you the whole time. I didn't give any of these other teams. Yeah, they they said I have a good three point shot on there, which is which is true in real life too. But I just never played with myself, so I wouldn't I wouldn't really know. My, all my cousins and nephews play it and tell me they play with me all the time. But it's pretty cool, oh, nice. like you know, just to be able to hear it and see. Nice. Actually, I, I just thought about this right now. Do you have like a like who is your like best time like buddy from the NBA or your like your like someone you hang out with most of the time, like someone you used to like look up to and something like that do you have uh, so there? so before i got to the nba my favorite player was baron davis and then you know oh. being able and then being able to get up playing the warriors and be teammates with him and be friends with him and our kids play together and you know i can call him whenever and ask for advice or just going out to eat with him stuff like that so it's definitely cool to be able to you know be able to see one of your mentors and talk to him in person and and uh not just you know just be a fan of it, but now actually be a friend and uh you know and, and be able to call him whenever you know, it's so interesting you bring him up because he's also an NBA player turned entrepreneur. And I actually yeah, reached yeah. out to him. I actually reached out to him when I, I reached out to a bunch of people and I did reach out yeah. to him. He's he's a really amazing guy. Um, it's awesome. Okay, well, um, any like last words or anything you want to say before we end off for my audience? Uh, go get the book. I got a coloring book too for girls because I have all girls. So uh, just let me know how you like it. I hope you guys like the book and uh, thanks for having me on the show. I appreciate it. Awesome. Sounds good, guys. Um, that was CJ Watson. You can go to cjpens.com. Thank you so much for watching the episode. Uh, make sure to hit that subscribe button, and I'll see you guys next time. Mm -hmm.